that's snuck. She's like, oh, because if he, I'm going to say this, and if he says A or B, <laughs> I'm going to punch him in his no, throat. I don't. If no, he says C, he gets to live. No, but you know what I'm saying, that certain responses will trigger, will get you going. Five, four, three, two, one. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Uh, welcome to oh episode 80, 8 zero of Married into Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. I am Lovey. I'm Snooks. And you're happy that you're Snooks. I am. All right, so this is 80. We, can you believe we've been doing this podcast for 80 straight weeks? Actually, that's not true. We've been doing it for 81 <sighs> straight weeks. Do you, do you realize that? Yeah. So, And the reason why it's 81, so what you guys are all seeing is the number 80, but... Somebody in his infinite wisdom decided that when we first started that the Thanksgiving episode, I didn't number it. I just called it the Thanksgiving episode. And so Snooks has not been happy ever since. No, you know what? I, I told you I moved past it once you acknowledged. <laughs> once I acknowledged once, that I was wrong. Yeah, once we dealt with it, I was fine. So, so let that be a lesson uh, for those of you that are in relationships. When one person thinks they're right... Um, you have to acknowledge that you were wrong, even when you weren't wrong. Even when you thought you were right. Even when you knew that you were right. No. And you still have to we acknowledge have that. We have 81 episodes. There are 81 episodes. Okay, that's all I was saying. But this is episode number 80. Because you numbered it wrong. Anyway. Tomato, tomato. So up old I hope Why are you each. Us? <laughs> I hope each and every one of you are safe, um, are in your homes. Um, depending upon where you're listening, there's a variety of different measures that have been put in place by the government um, in a response to COVID-19, better known as the coronavirus. So I'm just going to say this. I am not a healthcare worker, but I am someone that works within the healthcare space. We have family members that are physicians, that are nurses, that are involved. I've got a lot of friends that are in the industry as well um, in a variety of different clinical aspects. Please take this serious. It's it's a big deal. It's one of those things that everyone's like, well, it's not like the flu. The flu kills so many people. And, and you're absolutely right that the flu, from a standpoint of being a little bit more severe for certain individuals, true. But you have to keep in mind what the government is doing right now is trying to ensure that we don't suffer the same plight as other countries like Italy. As I was explaining to Snooks, it's not about the severity of the disease state itself. It's about the impact and the burden that this particular disease will put on our healthcare system. Italy is unfortunately faced with, I, I, can't even, I can't even imagine this, but they're faced with having to take individuals that are elderly, roll them out, because if somebody ends up having a, a stab wound, a gunshot wound, a motorcycle accident, car accident, um, any number of other issues that are higher on the pecking order when it comes to triaging a patient, those individuals have to take precedence. So if somebody is recovering from an ailment like coronavirus, though it is a respiratory disease or can progress to that, it's still lower on the pecking order. And they're having to make the decision of, do I save this 85-year-old individual or work with this individual, let them take up a bed, whereas I know that I have a 16, a 20, a 35 40, 50 year old individual here that's bleeding out. I got to move somebody else. So they're making very harsh decisions. And what we're trying to do is ensure as a nation that we're not going to put ourselves in there. Now it's, there's going to be some hard decisions still ahead of us, but I say all that because I want everyone to take it very serious. And, that, and that's something I think that is being missed. It's not about how you feel. And it's not really us. Those of us that are healthy for the most part, those of us that don't have any pre-existing conditions like COPD or respiratory distress, anything along those lines, or if you're not like really, really, really young, you're not the one that's there, but you can be a carrier. Now think about being exposed to somebody and then turning around and going to visit your grandmother, going to visit your grandfather, going to visit you know, your great aunt or your great niece or your little niece, or for that matter, your infant child. 
and then they're still in form, informative years and you pass on the virus to them. That's why this is a big deal and it's spreading quickly. It's a much more aggressive spread than the flu. It seems to stick around a little bit longer on certain surfaces. Uh, I think it's three days in the air or actually three hours in the air, but it can be up to like three or four days on certain surfaces if it's there. So that's why you should take it serious. And I hope that each and every one of you are doing what's being recommended by your local health authorities as well as the national health authority, wherever you may live. I know we have listeners in other countries. So whatever's going on in your particular aspect or your particular section of the world, please take heed and remain safe. What? Nothing, no. Oh, that's that's my spiel. So, it, to, so, so to that point, service announcement. So, if you follow us on Instagram, that is, um, what are we on Instagram? It's Married into Crazy and every one of our social media. So, it's Married into Crazy on Instagram as well as LinkedIn as well as Facebook. But on our on all those different platforms that send out these memes, the other day a thought came to me, and I thought, you know, we should be go givers in this environment rather than being a go getter. Meaning that if you haven't seen that, I was just saying that if you know two or three elderly individuals that are going to be at risk if they go out and do their shopping or what have you, I simply recommended that, <laughs> hey, be a good neighbor, be a good friend, a good nephew, grandchild, whatever, and go do the shopping for them. Mm-hmm. And there was a particular group that I belong to on Facebook that I'm seriously considering dropping. And it's a neighborhood type community. And I made the recommendation and one person was extremely offended and said, that sounds like age discrimination and you can't tell me and blah, 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 blah. Now, luckily there were people that, you know, stuck up for me or the, not even for me, stuck up for the idea. And they recommended, well, if you're able-bodied, you know, cause he said, oh, I'm a 70 something year old. Da, 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 da. And it's like, yeah, I get that. And it, it, then it, this doesn't pertain to you. Right. But why not? Since you're so able, go help that, that octogenarian around the corner. Someone else. Exactly. Go help somebody else. Yeah. You know, but the idea, the premise behind it was to be a good neighbor. Well, you know, it's funny that, well, I don't say it's funny. It's like one thing that people, they gravitate towards the negative. You mm. could, your intentions could be fabulous. It doesn't even matter. You could be doing something outstanding and someone will always find fault with what you're doing. And those are the kind of people that it's like, okay, who killed your dreams? <laughs> who kicked your puppy? You know what I mean? <laughs> who kicked your puppy? No, that, but you're right. It's like everything, no, no matter what it is, good intentions, um, uh, a good morning. What's so good about it? That's those kind of people. I mean, my mom is in her 70s. And if someone was around, she's very able-bodied. She can do whatever. But I would want her to stay home. Ma. Let somebody else go do that. I mean, you know, I'm, I call, I'm like, um, are you good? Yeah, I got everything. And I was just going to go and did it. I was like, okay, well, you know, we can do well, You don't live over here. I know, but still. <laughs> and even when you called her, I know it's funny. Cause I called, I called mom too. Mm-hmm. And same thing. No, nope, I'm going out. I'm like, well, you need to do this. And I made a couple of recommendations. I'm gonna go back out. Okay. Do you really <laughs> need to go out right now? And I'm like, no, nope, I'm gonna go. And then same thing with my dad. I, I told say, my dad. I yep. offered dad. I'm like, well, my dad's in his 70s. So I said, you know, hey, dad, I can come over there and help you out, do something. And he was like, nope, I got it. You know, I was like, listen here, Junior. <laughs> I got that speech. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't that bad. But he was like, nope, I got it. And then I called him back later. Hey, um, what I t- told you about early, oh, already taken care of. I went back out, right. handled it. I called Ika. I called um, my stepdad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and because he was even older than my mom. So Ika's. 82, right? I think so, yeah. And he is like Superman. No, I guess 80. He has to be 84. He's in his 80s, early 80s. Yeah, but about 84. He was like, nope, I'm perfectly yeah, fine. I, I go Superman. do my, I do my thing. Mm-hmm. And to meet him, you would think he was in his, you know, late 60s, early yeah, 70s. Seriously. But the man is awesome. You know, is it, my dad is, you know, getting around and all that as well. But it's one of those things where these people just don't want to be done for, which is fine. But, oh, by the way. I, I, no, I have to say this, that on um, our Instagram, and, and I'm going to double check it, she hasn't reached out, but there was one um, woman that was in the Baltimore area that did respond and say that she could she would appreciate having somebody go and do groceries for her. So I told her to reach out to me, to DM me, and then it dawned on me just right now that she probably doesn't know what DM means. <laughs> she 
what is DM? So I'm going to have to reach out to her specifically and ask and then reach out to some of the network that we have mm -hmm. to find out if somebody can go do yeah. groceries. So a, a friend of ours earlier today, um, one of our daughter's best friends came over and she does this online shopping for one of the major supermarkets and was talking about how there was a woman that called in and she was crying. Who? Um, Emily? Were you here? Yeah, Emily was over No, earlier. I wasn't here. That's oh, right, you were at work. Hello. So no, yes. so she came over and she was talking about how there was a woman that just was crying because she was distraught over. She didn't know how she was going to be able to pick up the groceries. Mm. And I'm just like, this is real. Yeah. People think it's it's like it's being made up, but I, I don't care how it got here. It's here. We're all in the same boat. Okay. So another thing, I mean, you know, this is not a podcast about the coronavirus, but right. one thing too, I know that a lot of people are um, rushing out to get toilet paper and, and all these different things that they need and you're not finding them on the shelves, one thing you can do is order it online from the very same store. Why are you telling secrets? Anyway, because it's about helping others, right? Uh, not until I get my toilet paper. <laughs> anyway, okay. we have toilet paper. But like Walmart.com, uh, Rayleigh's has uh, online service. Or, you know, you can order online. They have a delivery. You can order Costco can... online. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Costco has online. There, oh. There's a variety of things that you can actually end up doing. So don't don't distress when you don't find the, what you need in the store right away. It may take a couple of extra days to get to you, but if you have, um, if you if if what you have is sufficient to last you for at least a couple of days, go and do it that way. It's less stress. You pay for it, and then you can just go right and pick it up. So that's an idea. Yeah, but I got my ammunition, so don't come over here trying to take my toilet oh paper. Oh, my gosh. No There's, one wants the toilet paper. We're going to add another paper. amendment. You know, there was like the, the right to bear arms and have your ammunition. All that. There, there should be a right to toilet paper. Okay. There should be amendment TP. But I will <laughs> also add in that. So we, I had I'm a meeting sorry, guys. last week with our girls. And I think that I learned something from a 15-year-old. This is a, a, another uh, meme that I put out there. And this is something I learned from one of the players that I had the privilege of coaching in volleyball, we had a team meeting last week or it might've been the week before. No, it was, it was early last week. And we were talking about communication. That was the topic, you know, teammates communicating better, being better teammates, that kind of thing. And at the end of our, towards the, the tail end of our meeting, this 15 year old young lady, I want to say she's 15. She stated that she's a, 15 or 14, she's a freshman. Yeah, so. So, but she stated that something that she learned from her mom that she thinks would apply to what we were trying to do. And she says, we need to think before we open our mouths. And she goes, and then be very aware of what we're going to say. And when she says think, she's talking about an acronym. Again, if you've been on our Instagram, which is Married Into Crazy on IG, you will <laughs> see it. And that, that acronym for think, each letter represents a specific word. So it's, T H I N K. I know everybody knows how to spell it, but <laughs> it goes thoughtful. So when you say something, make sure it's thoughtful, um, honest, intelligent, intelligent, necessary. I was going to say nice. <laughs> necessary and kind. So if you're going to say something to someone or you're going to correspond with someone, even like when I was talking about the gentleman on uh, his response on Facebook, you know, what you're about to say or communicate, whether it's social media or face to face on the telephone, when you're having any communication with your spouse, with your loved one, with your children, with your coworkers, anybody, you know, ask yourself, is what I'm about to say, is it thoughtful? Is it honest? Is it intelligent? Is it necessary for me to say this? And is it kind? All of those things. And some people say, well, sometimes honesty, you know, you have to be brutally honest. No. What do you think? I, you don't have to be <laughs> brutally honest. Honesty does not have to be, have to be brutal. It just has to be honest. You know, if it is what it is, okay, you state that. I think what makes it brutal is the vein in which we say it and where it's coming from. You know, I could tell you, lovey, you never clean up or something like that. Why would you say no, that to saying, me? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's in the way that I say it. Well, you don't never do nothing anyway or whatever, mm, however. I, I've, I've heard that both ways. Yeah. Oh. Because you don't, babe. It's okay. But just, you know, I think people, we should do away with that brutally honest. It doesn't have to be brutal. It just needs to be honest. Just tell the truth. 
but don't be mean about it. Well, some people say, oh, the truth hurts. You know, you hear that phrase. Well, the truth does hurt if it's hurtful. I mean, but if it's, you know, I don't know. How do I say this? Um, See, I think sometimes you're convicted by the truth, meaning. Well, and that's what probably. When you know you're wrong, when you know you're doing something or even if you don't, you have this inkling that uh, this might not be the right way. Like, case in point. Okay. So I was at the store earlier today picking up some items, and there was a run. There was like, they brought in a big shipment of toilet paper and paper towels and all these things. You have to listen to that little voice. And I'm in line, and as I'm in line, they said, oh, there's no more toilet paper. We only have paper towels. And I thought, okay, well, whatever, that's cool. Because I wasn't going to get some more toilet paper just to be safe because I know that dad and mom might run out down the road. So I thought, I'll make sure I have some for our parents. And as I get up there, this the line right next to me was the self-checkout line. And these two gentlemen walked off. And this lady that was behind them goes, hey, you guys forgot your items. And, and I was like, yeah, you left the stuff right here. And I just pointed at it. And then the guys go, well, those aren't mine. Those are already there. Well, one of the items was toilet paper and the other one was some napkins so i reached down and picked up the toilet paper she grabbed the napkins and then she's like oh i needed the toilet paper and i was like well i don't need the napkins i said um you sure you don't need the napkins and she looks at me she's like no i need the toilet paper but go ahead and then i just sat there and i thought and my gut was just like you don't really need that toilet toilet paper um because you i was getting it for somebody else i thought you know what you know so i told the lady go ahead because that little voice told me go ahead so now if I had taken it and I had walked outside and somebody walked up and says, hey, I saw what happened, man. You know, you should have gave it to that lady. That The honesty in that, she was being very true, very honest. That would have hurt a little bit. It would have stung, not because they were wrong, but because I know they were right. I know that I didn't need it and I should give it to the individual. So I'm glad I did. But I think that's when when they say the truth hurts, that you know, when you're being honest, it doesn't have to hurt. But sometimes when it stings, it's because... There's an element of you knew better. Well, I think it, it when when someone points out the truth to you, it it, it makes you uh, it's self self awareness self um, oh my god self assessment you know self reflection right. all those type of things that make you look within yourself, and when you see stuff within yourself that you don't like, that's where the pain comes. I think because you're being you're like, especially if you think that you're here or you're on a, some type of level. And then when someone says, hey, you X, Y, Z. And you're like, oh, you think about it like, oh, man, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Right, so that's where, right. you know, it's like it, the truth will bring humility. If you, if you oh, I was going to say should. Yeah, you're I was gonna, if you let it, it should. It um, will bring, could bring humbleness, you know, um, the truth can do away with or should do away with arrogance, um, cockiness. It this, should. Well, you know, let's do should. this. Uh, how, how, would you mind? Okay, let, let's break I down. I mind. <laughs> no, play. Let's break down each one of the, the actors. We don't have to be, go into it very long. <clears throat> but let's just talk about what think should be and, and our thoughts on each one of the, the letters. So when it comes to communicating, the very first letter is the T, right? So that stands for thoughtful. thoughtful. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts when it comes to being thoughtful? I mean, it, does that pretty straightforward for me it is i mean when you when you say being thoughtful thoughtful to me means thinking of others okay i'm not thinking about just myself i'm being oh well that was you know when you do something nice for someone oh that was thoughtful of you that was nice of you or something like that you know i i think of um that's what makes me think about that's what i think of thoughtful so in the communicating it's not just about i gotta get my point across i gotta you know Yes, I do want to get my point across, but if I'm going to, if my point, I want my point to be effective. So that therefore I have to be thoughtful on if you're going to, how receptive you're going to be. I have to think about your mood that you're in because you may not be ready to hear what I have to say. Hmm. And if you're feeling some kind of way and I'm not being thoughtful, it's not like, you know, in a bad way of like, um, Oh, I can't say anything because no, you just want to be, you want to make sure that when you're talking, you're it's, it's effective and I don't want to waste my time and your time. And if I know that you're feeling some kind of way, 
I'm not going to say anything at that point because you're not going to get what I'm saying. You're going to take it personal. And then that's just going to be an argument. So, all right, I'll wait. Okay. No, I agree with you. And, and I think that what I think I agree on every single point. Because I hope you agree. No, <laughs> I said I think. I use think. How you think? Uh, no, but it, you're right. When it comes to being thoughtful, a lot of this perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Think of the other person's perspective. Always try to keep the other person's mindset and the angle or the vantage point from which they're they're approaching the situation, the conversation, whatever the task may be or what's going on. If you keep that in mind, you should end up being thoughtful because it, it, it the best conversations are the thought provoking ones. And so if you go into it with not just wanting to be heard, just rattling off, you just want to hear your own voice to actually be able to contribute something to where it's it's going to be, I guess, impactful. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. And so the next letter is honest. I think we've already touched upon honesty and truth to where it, it doesn't have to hurt. Okay. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to hurt. And we talked about the truth, but it's in being honest, honest doesn't mean, you know, being hurtful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are things that you can say to be honest, but it doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. It could be an extremely negative thing, and yet you're still being honest to a certain extent in the way that it's being delivered. Yeah, I was going to say that. I mean, sometimes, honestly, sometimes honesty is necessary. And if it's something that needs to be said, you have to be honest. Like, okay, so what the... <laughs> Like if our, with our son, like if he does something and I'm like, how many times I already tell him not to do that, whatever. And at some, I'm like, okay, look, I just have to be honest with you. You know, this is upsetting me or blah, 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 whatever. So in my being honest, I'm being, you know, I'm telling him, but I'm in my honesty. I'm also being thoughtful because. That's what I was going to say. You know. You're very thoughtful. I mean, and this is a lot. I mean, trust me, folks. This isn't going to happen overnight. Um, when you try and use this think mindset or philosophy. No, especially not if you're not used to thinking anyway. Oh, because like she used the example of our son. And <laughs> in the past, I got something to say. Boom. It's coming right out of my mouth. Bam. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you think. This is what I got to say in this moment. And I'm the dad. And I'm right. And you're always wrong because I'm the dad. And you should be seen. I don't care how old you are. You should be seen and not heard. So shut up and listen. I mean, believe it or not, that's how I used to operate because that's how I was raised. He still does that with the girls. To a certain extent. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But we are much more cognizant. And we're very thoughtful in how we approach things. Rather than just come right out the gate, mm -hmm. we think about, okay, how should I present this? There's a way that if I approach it from this direction, he's going to shut down. Mm. But if I come in from this direction, hmm. He may not shut down as quickly, but he's not going to be very receptive. But if I come from this direction, okay, then we might be able to create some dialogue and it might be a little bit more impactful because once we're talking, he might actually get what I'm saying rather than go into defense mode. Well, and the also kind of like to cut kind of to your point too, um, thinking about those, okay, A, B, C, which way is the best way to approach it. It's not just about, oh, because we don't want to upset him because I, I know myself that if he look, if you look at me, <laughs> side, what, what you, what? You, so you Snooks, know what I'm saying? So, so if you've ever seen the original Terminator, <laughs> if you've seen Terminator Whatever. and you remember when Arnold Schwarzenegger, somebody would say something to him, this is like the very first one, then he would sit there and then it would show like the computer screen where the responses that he was rolling through in his head. It'd be like, you know, this response, this response, this response. And it would select the appropriate response for the, that's Snooks. She's like, oh, because if he, I'm going to say this. And if he says A or B, <laughs> I'm going to punch him in his no, throat. I don't. If no, he says C, he gets to live. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? That certain responses will trigger, will get you going. So why go through all of that? Especially when I know if he, if I say something and he, he's not receptive to it and the way that he's not receptive to it, I'm not receptive to that. So it's just going to be ugly. So I'm going to save myself from getting upset because I already know he go, he, he goes sideways. He's going to go home. sideways. <laughs> See, that's being thoughtful. You're being honest with and yourself. Honest. And it's quite intelligent. <laughs> there you 
you go. That you, that the way that you're approaching this. And when we say intelligence, that's not what we necessarily mean when we talking no. when we talk about intelligent responses. But it is. It could be thought provoking. It could be something smart because we can say dumb stuff. I, I've, I'm all that. I, I could go good, for ignorant also. I'm like I've, I've spent a quarter of my life just saying dumb stuff and then some. Probably the first third. Let's just say the and first then third. When you marry me. I'd first third of my, I was around. still saying dumb stuff. <laughs> well, I do. That was probably one of the dumbest. <laughs> no. um, but I spent the, probably the first third of my life saying dumb stuff. Just whatever came to mind, how I felt, rather than actually giving some thought, some intellect, adding mm-hmm. something in about what, what is it that you're really saying right now and what are you trying to impart? What's the message you're trying to convey? Well, because that will that will end up biting you in the butt too. You know, that always, a lot of times, I would say always, it always, I feel like it always comes back to bite you when you, when you, um, you're not thoughtful, but you're honest because I'm honest, but what, it, but it's not intelligent, you know? Um, and then you just, ah, and you just put it out there. You can't ever regurgitate that and take it back. You, you will want to, but you can't. So uh, you can cause a lot of harm by not being intelligent. I know some people who, when they get upset, they don't say one intelligent thing. And when I, and I say that, cause you know, they, they start cursing and they start going off and they start and it's da, 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 blah, 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 whatever. And it's like, I understand you're mad, but you need to you cut might, that out. Might, well, I want to shut cut, that down. Cut, cut, cut that out. Because now I can't take you seriously. Right. You know, cause now, and, and then not only that, if you, if you're acting like that and, and if it's any way directed towards me, then I'm escalating. And then, right. so what gets, you've lost credibility and now you just drag me into the fight. Yeah. And now I got to fight. <laughs> well, see, okay. And this brings us to the Facebook component of think. And that's the N. Is it necessary? Is it necessary? And I say this, the Facebook component because, <laughs> Has some things that are, yeah. Listen, folks, you you do not have to participate in every fight that you were invited right. to. So think about that. Even with your spouse. Especially with your spouse. You don't have to participate in every single fight that you're invited to. Because sometimes my wife is fishing. She will throw out the line and really? I see the bait <laughs> just waiting. And she's just waiting for me wow. to just jump on it so she can sit there and yank up on really? it. Really? And then re- just reel me in. I just sit there. I'm smart now. I am thoughtful. Wow. I am intelligent. That's I'll just sit there and look happens. at the bait. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to bite on that one. That's not how it happens. No, but think about it. So necessary. Mm-hmm. Is your response necessary? It is a response even necessary. Sometimes people just need to vent. <laughs> Sometimes people just want to go. Let them go. Let them just like, boom, just diarrhea of the mouth. Let them go and just kind of nod your head. Don't even, if you have to do that, just so that they're you're acknowledging that you are listening, but is your response necessary? So that makes me laugh because Lovey, he kind of touched on it a little bit, but there have been times when I'm like on one, oh my gosh, I am going off. And he's just sitting there, he's like doing his work or whatever. And then I'm like, are you listening? Did you hear what I said? Da, 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 whatever. And he's like, babe, I heard you. I was like, I'm just saying, because blah, 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 blah. Da, 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 da. And then I'll leave the room and I'll come back and I'm like, oh, I feel so much better because I just had to get it out, you know? Well, see, and that's because I have scars. Oh, I have, I, oh, I got scar tissue from the times where she's going off. And then, so, 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 and then I just jump in like, well, did you try this? Did you try that? Did you, I start yeah, I go into fix it I'm mode. like, nope, I didn't ask that. Ooh, right. You know, she's like, mm. That Even makes though, me stop mid I'm like, ah. Sometimes you think I you're ask? being invited to the conversation, but you really aren't. No, you're just there. So, you know, right, exactly. Right. So is your response necessary? So think about that when you're talking to someone and even though that what you have to say is thoughtful, it's honest, it's an intelligent response, but you really got to temper all of that with, is it really necessary for me to add my two cents? Right. Because if your two cents gets chopped up into three pence, you got a problem. So make sure that it is necessary. And when it's all said and done, that brings us to the last one it, it, is what you have to say kind. And in kind doesn't mean that you're sparing somebody's, you're dumbing it down for them, but it's like, is it kind? Is it nice? Is it something that is going to add value Um, Mm -hmm. and not be hurtful and not, you know, really push, you know, kick the can down the road, you know, or add fuel to the fire. 
is it something that truly is necessary and is it going to de-escalate the situation? Because if what you have to say isn't going to de-escalate it, then it's a cruel statement or a cruel thing that you're adding to the conversation. You're setting that person up for a bigger failure. Because if you're adding fuel to the fire, all you're doing is turning a, you know, what is it, uh, like a, a one stage or a, uh, when they talk about a three degree, five degree fire when the, the fire stations respond, five yeah, alarm. alarm. Yeah, so if it's like a one alarm fire and you have the ability to just listen and if they get it out, then it's, it's, it's done. But then at the end point, you just you say one or two things, you might add a little fuel. All of a sudden that one alarm turns into a five, five alarm and now it's about to burn everything down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so make sure it's kind as well. Like the gentleman that was on the Facebook response. He had a valid point. You know, he, this is a person that's obviously taking a lot of pride in how in his upkeep and that he may be older, but he's in good health. And so that, that takes a lot of work. And so that pride in itself just went in the wrong direction. But after a certain point, it's like what he said wasn't kind, but he, he took offense to it. But then I think he calmed down once other people actually chimed in. But it wasn't very, his, his response to me wasn't very kind. But I, I can't say that it wasn't real. I mean, that's just the way you felt. Oh, that's how I felt. And it was unnecessary, <clears throat> but it was one of those things where it just went off. So think about that, folks. When you're talking with each other, whether it's on Facebook, all the stuff that's going on, you know, we, here we are. We're in an election year. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of additional stuff. That I know I have friends that are just now getting back on Facebook after. The last election oh my cycle. Oh gosh, that was. And so, and now they're getting <laughs> back crazy. into the fray. Yeah. And what you have coronavirus going on. You've got different things, people saying things. And there's some, there's always going to be ignorance out there. Just don't be part of it. Try not to be. And you can control that. Just, mm-hmm. Actually, I won't even say try. Just don't. You know, so restrain yourself from actually doing it. So there's a lot of this pertains to not just the climate that we're in right now, but also pertains directly to the relationships that you have with your coworkers, with your spouse, and best believe, right now is a trying time. I was getting ready to say that um, about about right now being a trying time. I think it's it's very important that we're more cognizant right now because the stress levels are higher. You know, when because everybody's level, in the house. Well, not me because I'm still going to work. I haven't been deemed a non-essential <laughs> as right? much as I'm trying to get that classification. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. Uh, am I non-essential? They're like, no, you're essential. Well, being non-essential isn't what it's all cracked up to be because then you're in the house with the other non-essentials. No, I can lock them out and I can glare at them and I can tell them to be quiet mm. or something. That's I the new family. I'm going to get like I a... I can't a, do that. I'm going to get a mat out in front of the, the, the house and just in our front door it says the non-essentials. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new name. The non-essentials. The non-essentials. But just, you know, like he was saying about just thinking, especially right now when you're stressed out or when you're worried and you tend to just fly off the handle and more times than not, you're going to come back and apologize. You should probably come back and apologize. I know some people are like, oh, well, I'm not apologizing because I was not wrong. Yeah, you were wrong. You know, you just don't want to apologize. But let's try very hard or let's just not try. Let's just not get ourselves into that situation to where we it's necessary to apologize. And the other funny part is like, like Lovey said, if, if you're, it's not funny if you're on quarantine or if you're, you're, um, shut in, shut in with your people, you know, and Lovey's, I think he's climbing the walls a little bit. I'm going nuts. I'm going absolutely nuts. I cannot stand being in these four walls. That's why I never took, that's why I never went into marketing. I did that marketing internship um, with my previous company back in uh, in Illinois. The outside. Ooh-wee. It was like a three, I was like, I, it was supposed to be for three days. I wasn't there five hours. And I was like, I will He's strangle like, somebody you, you in this building. Sunday. I have He's got like, to what? go outside. I got to go out and get some fresh air or something. I cannot be in a cubicle. I can't be in an office. I say can't. I mean, you adjust, but man, being in this house. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I'm going yeah, off on a tangent. Down. But that was a very you didn't you didn't think. I, I just said I was going to strangle somebody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't think. No, I'm just kidding. But it's true. Right now, in this trying time, right now, there's a huge amount of fear that is starting <clears throat> to swell because of the unknown that's out there. 
And this, this, we haven't been in a situation like this since 1918. So in our lifetime, for everyone that's walking around, it, this is unprecedented. We are in uncharted waters. And because of that, what we know doesn't really necessarily apply. And with that unknown comes fear, comes anxiousness, comes a variety of things. And that's when we stop thinking. So a big part of this podcast today was to just ensure that you take a step back and you think. You know, all the things that we talked about, you know, thoughtful, honest, um, intelligent, intelligent, necessary, kind. Those things should be part of our lives, part of our philosophies every single day, regardless of what the situation is. Mm -hmm. But right now in this climate, let's think about that. Because there's a lot of things that are taking place across the nation. We have National Guard being called up in a variety of areas. We have a variety of counties here in California that are being told, stay in, do not go out. Um, at some point, you know, there's going to be heightened tensions. And we need people to think before they act. And, you know. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of each other. And the way we do that is remembering that we're all part of a huge community. And love is something that is desperately needed at this point. Love and understanding and thinking. A lot of thought needs to go into how we're working with each other. So it's not just about the relationship with your spouse or your loved one that's in there with you. The person that's next door to you. The people that are shut in with you, your kids. Some of you aren't used to being around your kids as much. Hmm. Um, well, hey, let me reintroduce you to them. Now's the time to make sure that we, we use this time to come closer together and rally as a nation, rally as a community. So that way, if and when these things happen in the future, we now know how to respond. And if nothing else, we pass on the stories of how we overcame this to the next several generations to ensure that they're equipped to deal, deal, to deal with this better than what we did. Mm -hmm. Does that sound fair? Yeah. So at this time, what I would love to do, I was going to, it's called two for the road, but two for the road, two for the quarantine because you can't get on the road. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pick these. And if you're home, I really want you to focus on doing this, whatever it may be. Okay. So you want to go first? <laughs> I can send flowers just because. Don't send me flowers. Okay, I'll send them to uh, myself. No. Nah. Um. <laughs> this you is can, perfect. You can clean up. Nope. You can cook. In the spirit of COVID-19, I can let my partner have some alone time. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is so awesome. So you get some alone time when you come back from being when essential. I come back from being essential. <laughs> When I, when I become non-essential. When you're able to hang out with the rest of us non-essentials. Oh, man. I was like, are you sure I'm essential? Hey, so we want to thank each and every one of you for participating, uh, listening to the podcast, for choosing us. We ask that you go to Apple Podcast. Give us that five-star rating. Let us know what you think. But even then, feel, we've been getting some great responses too lately. But go to either our website at meridiantocrazy.com where you can actually respond to us there through email, or you can go to us directly. Five stars. She wants five stars. Five or you can go stars. to us directly at snooksandlovey at gmail.com or coaching at marriedintocrazy.com. So look, I, I plan on making a, a pretty interesting announcement here in the next 24 to 48 hours um, of the time that this podcast is being released. So be on the lookout on our social media. And um, I'm going to ask that everybody participates in what I'm going to put out there. Okay. Not everybody, because then I'll be overwhelmed. But everybody. those of you that see value in what I'm going to be putting out there, please participate. Um, I look forward to actually interacting with each and every one of you. We're very thankful for all of you. And in this time, more than ever, be blessed. Bye-bye.